Hello everyone, greetings from Sydney, Australia. My name is Aysen Liang. I'm from Sydney Fibro Clinic. My topic is uterine artery embolization for adenomyosis. How does it compare with other treatments? The aim of this session is to understand the clinical aspect of adenomyosis, to be familiar with ourselves, all the treatment options available to treat adenomyosis, and to learn how to take clinical ownership in the management of adenomyosis. Adenomyosis is due to the presence of ectopic endometrial gland and stromal tissue in the myometrium, an associated reactive myometrial hyperplasia. Women with adenomyosis typically suffers from severe heavy menstrual bleeding, period pain, and premenstrual bloating as well. Ultrasound typically show a large uterus with asymmetrical wall thickening and venation blind artifact. MRI can potentially demonstrate the T2 hyperintense ectopic endometrial tissue as well as associated myometrial hyperplasia seen as thickened junctional sum. Ultrasound can sometimes mistaken focal adenomyosis as fibroid. On MRI, we can see clearly it's an infiltrative lesion with T2 hyperintense endometrial glandular tissue. In the presence of fibroid, ultrasound can be quite challenging in detecting these subtle mal, um, and uh, abnormality changes, but it's clearly seen uh, demonstrated on the MRI. In terms of treatment options, I want to walk, walk over the surgical options first. Is endomyosis resectable? The short answer is no. It is an infiltrative lesion. There's no clear surgical planes. Unlike fibroid, they can be re enucleated and um, it is quite difficult to resect uh, adenomyosis. You either under-resect or over-resect. In my opinion, adenomyosis is not a surgical lesion. How about ablation? Endometrial ablation uses heat energy to destroy the endometrium. In the process, more adenomyotic glandular tissue will be trapped and therefore sealing off these glands can worsen period pain. And therefore, in my opinion, endometrial ablation is contraindicated in adenomyosis. Hysterectomy has been traditionally re regarded as the only cure for adenomyosis in the past. However, is this still true in the 21st century? Doesn't matter how hysterectomy is done, laparoscopically, robotically, or transabdominally, it remains a major surgical procedure. The risk of severe complication from hysterectomy remains at 3.5 to 11%, even at 2019. There are also many long-term side effects we need to consider as well, typically prolapse and incontinence, early menopause by four years, increased coronary artery disease by 33%, even you leave the ovaries behind. Other adverse long-term side effects include sexual dysfunction and constipation, probably related to nerve damage during resection. There are good medical therapies and much less invasive treatment options for adenomyosis. We're going to go through this. trans exit can reduce heavy menstrual bleeding. The action is antifibrinolytic, shifting the balance towards thrombosis. However, this is contraindicated in patients who has increased risk of arterial or venous thromboembolic disease. non are useful in managing period pain. It also has some effect on heavy menstrual bleeding as well. They work by inhibiting prostaglandin synthesis. Progesterone agent 
is commonly used to treat heavy menstrual bleeding. It can arrest acute heavy menstrual bleeding by using a high dose. It can also be used in a cyclical or continuously, uh, uh, cyclically or continuously. The side effect is breakthrough bleeding, breast tenderness, acne, weight gain, bloating, moodiness, as well as migraine. Combined oral contraceptive pills are commonly used by the uh, GPs as a first line treatment for heavy menstrual bleeding as well as uh, period pain. However, we need to know that there's no specific studies that OCP reduces heavy menstrual bleeding in fibroids or anomalouses. Medical therapy should not be regarded as a long-term solution. They treat the symptoms, but they don't reduce the underlying pathology. The disease can still progress with medical therapy and eventually they will not work anymore. The long-term side effects, uh, the, the side effects of medical therapy need to be considered. Marina IUD leaches out low dose of progesterone locally for up to five years. It's been shown that it's effective for both heavy menstrual bleeding and period pain. It works by destrutalization of endometrium, resulting in decreased menstrual flow, and is thought to be uh, acting on the adenomyotic foci by causing down regulation of estrogen receptors. There's a randomized controlled trial from Turkey demonstrating comparable increase in hemoglobin at 12 months, at uh, six and 12 months, and there's no difference in patients' quality of life improvement. And therefore, it has been regarded as an alternative to hysterectomy in many patients. A three-year follow-up study from China has also demonstrated significant pain score drop with Marina. However, the patient satisfaction rate at 12 months is only 56%. This is probably due to side effects. 25% will have prolonged bleeding and 14% will have irregular bleeding. Other side effects are weight gain, ovarian cysts, lower abdominal pain, and acne. More recent study has shown that when the uterus is enlarged to 150 mil, Marina is less likely to work. And if it is more than 340 mil, 70% of patients will discontinue Marina. And therefore, it's probably less effective in women with more extensive anomalouses. How about UAE? UAE for anomalouses is essentially the same procedure as UAE for fibroid. However, we tend to use smaller particles with harder endpoints, and we routinely use microcatheter to avoid spasm. It is suitable for women who has failed medical therapy, including Marina, and trying to avoid a hysterectomy. As you can see here, sometimes we see normalization of uh, junctional sung thickness following UAE. The disappearance of uh, T2 hyperintense foci and normally normalization of uh, junctional sung. Unlike uh, treatment of large submucosal fibroid, post embolization sloughing does not seem to be an um, issue with uh, UAE for adenomyosis. And personally, I have not seen um, sloughing off of large piece of tissue or endocatheter migration of any large amount of abnormal tissue into the cavity, although there has been case report of uh, sloughing of large tissue, but it is uncommon. As far back as 2013, NICE Institute has recommended 
uh, UAE uh, as a treatment option for endoviruses. 2017 meta-analysis has shown that uh, for pure adenomyosis, we expect to have 74% long-term success rate. For combined adenomyosis and fibroid, the success rate is even higher at 85%. It is important to note that hysterectomy rate for those women who has been treated with UAE is only 7%. In other words, with UAE, we potentially can save seven out of every 100 women who otherwise would, would need uh, hysterectomy. In 2018, we published our result in 117 women uh, with symptomatic uh, adenomyosis treated with UAE. We were able to achieve 90% uh, success rate at 22.5 uh, follow-up, meaning the patients are happy or very happy uh, with the uh, uh, UAE. There is significant pain score reduction from 7.45 to 1.32. There has been no major complications and the hysterectomy rate is only 5%. We also have two successful pregnancy in this group. It is important that we follow up patients ourselves and we take clinical ownership of our patients. It is important that we learn how to manage post embolization syndrome and to manage patients' ex expectations as well. They need to be told our success rate is not 100%, but rather 90%. And they might need one to three months to see the result of UAE in reduction of heavy menstrual period and period pain. A three months review, we want to make sure that they're happy with the outcome and uh, with, we treat them with add-on medical therapy if necessary. If they are already with Marina, if the bleeding is regular, uh, irregular and prolonged, then Marina should perhaps be removed at that stage. We see our patient at six months with an MRI. If there are issues at that time, uh, we need to help the patient to resolve those issues. If they have PV vaginal discharge or intermenstrual bleeding, we need to arrange hysteroscopic DNC and then the mitral biopsy for them. If the heavy menstrual bleeding has resolved and yet they still have significant period pain, then perhaps they might have underlying endometriosis which exists with, uh, coexists with adenomyosis in 80% of patients, and therefore laparoscopy might need to be arranged for this patient. We've seen many patients with coexisting pelvic congestion syndrome as well. So if they have residual pelvic pain, and if that's due to pelvic congestion, ovarian vein embolization uh, can be organized. We routinely only follow patient for six months, but we will tell the patient if they have any residual symptoms or recurrent symptoms, we're happy to review them, to consider for add-on medical therapy, or sometimes even repeat UAE. We use hysterectomy as last resort. This is an example of a giant adenomyosis that require two UAEs to achieve a good clinical outcome. A few words on fertility. Adenomyosis has negative impact on fertility and pregnancy. It also has a detrimental effect on IVF outcomes as well. Therefore, for those women who still want to have um, fertility or have strong desire for fertility, and uh, GNRHA treatment should be considered to recondition the uterus. These causes a medically induced menopause, and therefore its use is limited to three to six months. Patient can develop osteoporosis if they are treated longer than that. This causes a regression of adenomyosis. Currently, there is lack of data on fertility after UAE for adenomyosis it is unclear if UAE improves fertility or not after UAE. 
all we can tell the patient is that they have 95% chance of keeping the uterus after UAE, and they have to accept the 1% to 3% rate of ovarian failure following UAE for women younger than 40 years of age. So in summary, I think interventional radiologists can be a woman's go-to specialist for abnormalities. We can guide the GP for uh, medical therapy, although this may not be a long-term solution. We need to let the patient know uh, the marina option is 56% patient satisfaction rate, and to warn them that this may not be effective if the uterus is larger than 150 mil. We should be able to tell our patient that UAE is a very effective and safe alternative to hysterectomy. And the durability at five years remains at 90%, and we're going to publish this paper in the next few months. If the patient wants fertility, and then they should have GnRJ treatment to recondition the uterus before trying to get pregnant and before um, frozen embryo transfer. Ablation and surgical resection should be avoided in the setting of abnormalities. Thank you very much for your attention. And the reference articles can be found on our website, cdfibroclinic.com.au. Thank you.